Hey, how's everybody doing? Going live? I haven't been live. I haven't been on here. I haven't been uh, really as active with everything as I've wanted to be. But, uh, you know, I've been busy with builds and stuff like that. If you followed my Instagram, um, it's .tj .forreal at Instagram. You've already seen that I've been really busy with a lot of uh, custom builds. Usually 120s on roll lines, that's like the most common thing. My allergies are just absolutely destroying me right now. Uh, it's allergy season here in San Antonio, Texas, and I'm just getting flooded with the allergy stuff. But um, yeah, I wanted to do a product overview on the Rydell 220. So a little bit of a backstory on that is... Um, the 220 is a step up from the Rydell 120 boot. However, it doesn't really get purchased as much. Usually right now, everybody's going for something on the super high end, uh, end of the scale. Like they're going for the, uh, the Godfather or, well, yeah, well, the Godfathers. But as far as Rydell goes, um, they're either going straight to the 3200 right now, or they're getting the OGs. But most of the time, the one, uh, the one uh, 72. But most of the time, what they're actually doing is uh, they're getting the 3200s. Um, if they spend less than that, usually they're getting the 111, which is a vinyl or PVC uh, version. Uh, you know, full plastic. Um, I guess he's a vegan version of the uh, 120. Now, the 120 is actual leather, but it actually has the same outer sole, okay? That same outer sole as the 120 or the, one, yeah, the 111, I'm sorry. So, it's basically the 111 sole with a leather upper. So one model that doesn't get talked about a lot, but it's actually a pretty quality model, and I'll go over some things about it, um, is the 220. It doesn't really get purchased a lot, but this right here is the Rydell 220. I'm actually in the process of mounting it, so don't come for me about the mounting bolts. Like, I just started mounting these, and I stopped, and I said, man, I should have started doing that live before I before I started mounting these up. I'm putting a uh, roll line variant on these uh, for one of our star uh, artistic skaters at our rink at the Rollercade in San Antonio. Um, so what's what's different about the 220? Well, first and foremost, the most notice, notable change here that you're gonna see is that it actually has the, um, you know, the, 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 the leather, stacked leather heel. And it's got a leather sole. Now it's not stitched, but guess what? None of the uh, current current Rydell um, high tops are stitched at all. Not even the you know seven hundred dollar thirty two hundred. That's not even stitched. That is glued and nailed from the inside. Okay. <clears throat> now. Thing is, with the 120, I noticed that even though they're both the same leather upper, is that the 120 is actually a fair bit stiffer than this. Now, this has a little bit of give to it until you get down here. The heel cup and counter down here is rock hard. So that's kind of a nice thing. Moving to the inside, we still have that famous, uh, you know, semi-closed or closed cell foam rubber tongue that's used in the 120 boot um which some people really really like and some people really 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 hate and the thing about that is um you know it's very durable and it just kills lace bite which is a nice thing but also it can rub your foot sometimes on for some people it can rub the top of your foot and cause a little bit of a reaction so um sometimes those don't work out 
uh, fixes for that. Uh, people have been known to take that out and um, glue in shirling, which is the fur, which is, you know, you know uh, sh uh, um, but wool, basically. Um, but now that we're on the inside, this is one of the most noticeable difference right here. When you go from the 120 to the 220 is this interior, this, this micro suede, I'm going to, I'm going to butcher this. I swear I want to call it the Clarino, but I don't think it's Clarino uh, leather, but uh, this stuff is nice. Like this interior is nice for the price. Why don't more people buy this boot? It, it did it just, it makes more sense. You do have the nice contour to the padding at a budget range. The, the leather is still a, it's still a quality cut of leather. Um, <clears throat> you have the, the leather sole, uh, you know, and a leather stacked heel. Uh, you have your rubber, uh, high density rubber uh, uh, shock pad right there at the last layer. Um, they're all in all, this thing's a, just a nice boot for the price. Um, personally, I would, I would love to see it with a Sherling, Sherling tongue lining. But, uh, by that point, you're already looking at, hi, <laughs> uh, by that point, you're already a uh, little big planet 17 made it. We in there. Um, but by that point, you're already looking at like a 297. And the thing about the 297 is it starts out really stiff-ish, but eventually it still wears down into this, and it's like, why spend the money? Uh, but all the features that the 297 has, except for the Sherling tongue, this 220 has got it. So this is like, I would say, if you're doing definitely if you're doing single jumps and you're getting to like introductory to doubles. Uh, to double jumps like this is this is a viable option really but I just we don't see a lot of people on that anymore they either they either do the 111s if they're on a strict budget or they do the 120s if they're on a strict budget but they've got a little bit extra to spend or they just jump past all of it past the 220 past the, the 297s and they jump directly to the 336 which i have down here and i'm going to do a comparison real quick i got a three brand new 336 down here that i'm putting together later they jump straight past this and the 297 like they don't even exist now check this out here is a 220 here is a 336 you know all right well feature for feature I'll go ahead and do a comparison on feature for feature. 220, 336. This is the Rydell 220, and this is the Rydell 336. All right. So I think I'd covered that before, but check this out. The interior of this, this is the 336. The interior of this versus the interior of the 220. This is a slightly different material. This is like a smoother micro micro suede and this is like a like a suede um this one's just a little bit more robust in its padding now let's talk stiffness this thing's definitely got this one beat in that area because i can pinch that down and this is my this is my weak hand this is my dominant hand and i'm and then this this is my non-dominant hand with the 220 so it's not bad um words to the wise about stiff boots like everybody's like the stiffer the better honestly it really depends if you're gonna do crazy stuff where you're like tilting on the lips of the wheels and stuff like that yeah that's when you're gonna want it but honestly most of the time this 336 is all you need for it i put people on these 336s for that and it's great and this is a very versatile boot um this is still kind of a competitive boot or intro to competitive boot. So being that it's competitive, these 
little pieces of you know felt carpet whatever this is this is the insole you get on a 220 right well check this out look at the insole you get on a 336 you get their their ergonomic uh molded foam foot beds you know that that you see in almost every other model you know um past like a three hundred dollar price range for just the boot that's what they're going to put in there and it's a little stuff down there in the heel area to put that in but this here that the back stay on the 336 is triple stitched the back stay the heel stay on this on the 220 is only double stitched okay then when you move up to the 297 that's when you're going to start seeing triple stitching in the back and then the 336 and then so on and so forth the 336 is rolled over the top the interior rolls over the top and out around the top edge so it's a little less abrasive right there where this makes contact on you which is a nice thing it makes it a lot less likely for you to have any sort of abrasion type injury uh the padding is definitely more robust in the in the 336 and of course again it is stiff this is something that you break in in weeks not days or months not weeks depending on your frequency of skating uh, but you're definitely not breaking this in in days. Um, you'll also notice, and I hope my resolution is good enough, you see how this sole is kind of like a different texture down here on this layer, and then it's, a, you know, on this layer it's different? Well, that's because this layer right here is, of course, leather. And as you notice, like I said, this is a 336. I got to take this back out. 336. It's not stitched. I'm sure back in the day they probably were. They're not doing that no more. Okay. And this is stiff and rigid up here too. That's nice. But going back to that, there's a layer of cork, you know, right there. That's a layer of cork that runs up to about right there. And then the leather is laid over top of that. And that's to reduce weight of the boot. Um, also, if you look in here, you'll notice that this is a different color or texture from about right here down to here. It's because there's several layers of cork right here in the heel. And so it starts out, it's two or three layers of leather and then several layers of cork and then two or three layers of leather. And then you have your high density rubber shock pad right there to reduce shock. And that is to also reduce weight that's why they use the cork um with the 220 there is no um lace bar like was on here or um loop or anything like that to keep that from sliding so that just keep in mind that that could become an issue i'm not saying it's a deal breaker but that could happen you just got to watch out for that uh with this one the, the 336 obviously you got that dense cushy shirling tongue which is actually padded inside the shirling too like you could if you squeeze it you can feel a little bit but yeah that's real dense it doesn't mat up the leather is real soft on that tongue too it's real flexible because unlike this one that has the rubber backing you know this one this one's just even with all that padding and on there, it's still pretty, pretty good, you know. Um, it's a great boot, you know. They they but this 220 going back to this 220, I don't know why more people aren't on it. Uh it's it's like a 120, but just made like they were paying a little more attention and they put a little bit more care into it, and they yeah, they wanted to make a nicer product uh hold on sons of my eyes um but you know overall for the price depending on what you're going to do like if you're just going to do like general like dance skating this is a great option if you actually want to get something super duper nice and high quality i'm not going to lie like this is a this is a very well built boot it really is i i can't find any flaws in it 
you know, um, but you don't want to break the bank, but you want something good. That's, that's a great boot. Honestly, it's not bad. Um, 336 has better lace hooks. Like if you look here, you see these, these like stamped, stamped steel, you know, lace hooks. If those get caught up on the other one, they can, they can catch on and, you know, uh, basically bend them. The 336 has these lace hooks like nothing else, really. Um, you know, I think 3200 has the same ones. But these things, these are, I don't know what, if they're like forged or something like, like whatever they're made out of. These things are robust. And if these get caught on anything, they're not getting bent. Like, they are not. It's going to take a lot. Oh, one other thing that I forgot to mention about this, uh, these 336s, though. You're going to love this. The 336, most notably, aside from the lace bar and, and this part of the, the rolled cuff up top, the most notable thing you're going to notice about that 336 is this. This right here. That right there is a flex notch. So when you flex forward on that, it, it can actually, you know, when you when you bend forward, man, I'm having a hard time talking today. Um, when you when you try to squat down or anything, pistol squat, shoot the duck, sit spins, any of that, naturally your ankle's gonna bend forward. What this does is it actually release it actually eliminates some of that tension even when you're laced up it eliminates some of that tension and allows you a deeper flexion and a deeper sit during all of those moves but also it keeps your boot the leather from creasing up over time as much from doing that so um this is one of those boots honestly if you were doing doubles and introductory to triple jumps i would go with a 336 um, but yeah, just having this around because this, um, this was like the boot to have for a while. It's the 336. It does have a weird toe shape too. I'm going to tell you right now, like this toe shape, it's like slanted and stuff. It's really weird. But if you just look at this, how it like points, it is a very strange toe shape. As opposed to the 220, which is more rounded. So, you know, this, every time I mount one of these, I, I second guess whether or not it's on straight. But then I remeasure. And I measure using a set of cal digital calipers. Okay. So I get down to like, you know, tenths of a millimeter. And, you know, and even hundreds of a millimeter and stuff like I really want to make sure that there is no discrepancy when it leaves my bench and it gets into a customer's hand that those things are absolutely straight. And the last thing that a customer has to worry about is whether or not it, the mount is correct. I take my time with every one of them just to make sure it's perfect. And because of this slant right here. I always got to go back and say, did I just, did I mess up? And it gives me the worst anxiety ever. I go, did I mess up? You know, and I have to second guess it and I have to remeasure over here and, 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 and look at it and say, did I, did I just screw up this boot? You know, because if I do, I'm going to be the one to pay for it inevitably. Um, so yeah, that's, that's just kind of a light comparison of, of uh, these two different boots, uh, but I just wanted to share it. You know, normally when um, something comes across the bench, and I know that there's not a lot of reviews on it, or I haven't had my review on it, because I know there are a lot of people coming out and doing these things, and usually it's they're done by a lot of people who just got skating over the last like two years. Me personally, I go through more skates and more parts and, you know, and components and things like that and more homebrewed modifications and stuff like that. I do all of that in one year 
than most people have done in the last two years that they've been skating. And that's not a dig at any of the new skaters. Please do not take it that way. But, yeah, I've been doing this a very, very, very long time. I've had my hands on a very lot of products, a lot of which people can't get their hands on now. So that's why I do these. I just want to share the stuff. Uh, most of the time, it's it's me just building them for somebody else. But uh, I hope you enjoyed. My name is TJ, and uh, this was a overview on – the Ride L220 boot and what makes it different from everything else in the lineup. Peace.